Hello everyone, welcome to Historically Accurate. Today I will talk about the most exciting, interesting, and influential period in Chinese history, the Three Kingdoms period. I will also talk about how I was fascinated by this period of history and finally developed the hobby of studying history. Many of you may have heard about the characters and stories of the Three Kingdoms period. But I will still briefly and quickly introduce this period of history to the friends who don't know much about it. The Three Kingdoms period refers to the period between the Yellow Turban Rebellion in 184 AD and the conquest of the state of Wu by the Jin Dynasty in 280 AD. The Yellow Turban Rebellion, a peasant revolt that broke out in 184 AD, dealt a heavy blow to the decaying Eastern Han Dynasty. All over China was gradually controlled by the powerhouses and warlords. Dozens of warlords attacked each other, and in the end only three winners survived. They were Cersei, Jon Snow, and Khaleesi. <coughs> Oh, no, 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 just kidding. They were actually Cao Cao's kingdom of Wei, Liu Bei's kingdom of Shu, and Sun Quan's kingdom of Wu. That's why this period of history is called the Three Kingdoms period. These three kingdoms confronted each other for decades, and the Western Jin dynasty, formerly the kingdom of Wei, which was the most powerful among the three, conquered the kingdom of Shu and the kingdom of Wu and reunified China. In fact, Chinese history has many periods of time during which a central government collapsed, various warlords took control of different areas of China, the most powerful warlord conquered all of the other warlords and reunified China again. But why is the Three Kingdoms period the most influential? To answer this question, I have to mention the novel, Romance of the Three Kingdoms, which was based on this period of history. This novel was written by Luo Guanzhong in late Yuan Dynasty to early Ming Dynasty period. He cleverly adapted and matched many historical events and characters, making this novel very exciting and enjoyable to read. The novel became so popular and influential that many Chinese readers thought the stories in the novel are true history. This novel has also become one of the four great classical novels of Chinese literature. If you still didn't get it, I can make an analogy. The characterization and storyline of Romance of the Three Kingdoms are very similar to Game of Thrones, and its influence in the East Asian cultural sphere is comparable to Shakespeare's Hamlet, both of which are still resonating with people even hundreds of years after they were written. Like Game of Thrones, characters in Romance of the Three Kingdoms also have very distinctive characteristics. Liu Bei, for example, was not from an aristocratic family. Even though his humanity won the hearts of the people, he had to live a vagrant life with Guan Yu and Zhang Fei in his early days because he lacked both material resources and social status. As a warlord, he often lost his territory and was defeated many times. However, he overcame his many defeats and still managed to carve out his own realm when he was 59 and became one of the three winners in the end. His story is quite inspiring. The second example is Cao Cao. He recruited many talents using his flexible way of screening. He also defeated Yuan Shao, one of the most powerful warlords in northern China, in adverse situation and unified northern China. Cao Cao was also a famous poet in his time. He had many affairs with other warlords' wives. He bragged a lot, but oftentimes his statements were invalidated by later facts. The complexity of his personality attracts me to study his character. 
The third example is the symbol of Chinese acumen and wisdom, Zhuge Liang. In romance of the Three Kingdoms, many other people's ingenuity and stories were attributed to Zhuge Liang by Luo Guanzhong. As a result, Zhuge Liang became an almost omnipotent person. Coupled with the significant influence of this book, he has become the embodiment of wisdom in Chinese culture. In Chinese, a person who claimed to be prescient after things already happened is called Zhuge Liang after the events. To express two heads are better than one, we would say three smelly tanners surpass one Zhuge Liang, etc. These are all interesting things about Romance of the Three Kingdoms. It is a very important novel to me because it triggered my interest in history. Around 1994, China broadcast a 84-episode TV series about Romance of the Three Kingdoms. The show was faithful to the original in every aspect and had some great innovations of its own. I was still a child at that time and didn't know much about the history of the Three Kingdoms. But because of this show, I started to have a great interest in the characters and plot of the novel. Not long after the show got broadcast, my dad bought our first 486 computer using DOS system and brought back a game, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4 from Koei. The game had enhanced graphic and sound quality. Also, the strategy and tactics as well as the character settings in the game were in line with stories in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. Being able to play the characters of the Three Kingdoms in the battle with wisdom became my greatest joy at that time. Later I became addicted to this game and my dad had to strictly limit my time on the computer. I would have fun when they were not at home, but I had to turn off the computer 30 minutes before they got home. I guess their time of arrival based on their work schedule, and then use a wet towel and a fan to cool the huge monitor. Otherwise, my dad would know that I was playing games at the touch of the monitor. My dad probably found out about my trick later, so he figured out another way to stop me from playing that game. In DOS system, he changed the name of the execution file of Romance of the Three Kingdoms 4 from sand4.exe to sand4.ere. As a result, I couldn't start the game at all. The DOS operating system is not a graphical user interface like today's Windows or Mac OS. All tasks in DOS system require commands to be executed. Without knowing the command to rename the file, I couldn't play the game again. In the age when there was no internet, finding such information was really difficult. That did stop me from playing the game for a few weeks. But one day I suddenly realized that my dad certainly didn't know how to change the file name at first. He must have learned it from one of his colleagues who knew computers very well. Thinking of this, I went to steal my dad's notebook, searching page by page, and finally found the command to change the file name on one page, R-E-N. After I found out the command, 
I changed the file name to sand4.exe when I wanted to play the game and changed the name back to sand4.ere after I finished. And I didn't even bother to cool down the monitor anymore. Even though my dad felt strange about the warm monitor, but he never knew that I had found out the command to change the file name. I have a lot of stories similar to the one that I just told you. If you are interested to know more, I can make a video about my childhood stories in the future. In short, this TV series and the game quickly triggered my strong interest in the Three Kingdoms period. In order to better understand the Three Kingdoms period, I started reading the original novel of Romance of the Three Kingdoms and bought a lot of books about that era. In addition, I also bought and read military books such as The Art of War, written by Sun Tzu. Especially when I learned that Cao Cao annotated for The Art of War at a very young age, I started annotating my own naive understanding about this book in a notebook. At first, like many other readers, I also thought the stories in Romance of the Three Kingdoms are all historically accurate. However, as I read more and more books, I gradually realized that the Romance of the Three Kingdoms is just a novel. To learn the true history of the Three Kingdoms period, I also need to read real history books such as Records of the Three Kingdoms, History of the Later Han, and Zhi Zhi Tongyan. After reading those history books for a while, I found out that many stories in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms had never been recorded in history. It totally blew my mind especially when I found that some of the most popular stories in the novel were not true at all. For example, there is a very famous scene in the novel, the three heroes battling against Lü Bu, which never actually happened. Lü Bu was actually repelled by Sun Jian. There is also a classic scene in which Zhao Yun rescued Liu Bei's son E Dou from Cao Cao's army in the novel, but this scene is also heavily exaggerated. This experience made me realize that it is very difficult for us to actually know the truth of history or a story. We can only try to get as close to the truth as possible by comparing data and evidence from various sources and analyzing the information with logical thinking. It also helped me gradually develop my habit of not making judgment only based on single source of information. I can't say enough about my love for the Three Kingdoms period. It can be an excellent window for everyone to learn about Chinese history. In future videos, I will talk more about characters and interesting stories of this era, as well as my thoughts on them. I will attach a link down below for you to buy Chinese or English version of the Romance of the Three Kingdoms. If you are interested, please read it. I guarantee you will not be disappointed.